Hi everyone, it's a privilege to be here and share this Sunday healing time with you. So we heard about these tremendous testimonies of God's healing and it seems to just flow so smoothly to some people and what is it that I need to do to qualify for these miracles from God? Is there something, some special formula? Do I have to pray 10 hours, read the Bible, three hours fast? What is it that I need to do? And the irony is that it's a doing that puts these miracles away from us. And let me uh, start sharing a few scriptures that will help illuminate this. The key one is Galatians 3.5. If you have a paper and a pen, just take note of the scripture references and later on just read it for yourself because they're amazing in what it's telling us. So again, Galatians 3.5. Therefore, he, that's God, who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law? or by the hearing of faith. So let me repeat that again. Does God work the miracles that Dr. Susan has been sharing about? Does he do it by the works of the law? Or does he do it by the hearing of faith? What is the works of the law? The works of the law is obedience. It is fulfilling. It is doing the law. It is not disobeying the law. It is doing the law. And the question is, do these miracles come about by us doing these works of the law? Does it come about by us obeying, fulfilling the law? We all need miracles, obviously. And so we think that there's something that we have to do to qualify for these miracles. They just can't come freely and fall on our head. There must be something that we do to deserve it, to earn it. And this earning concept is actually what opposes what we just read. Do we do the works of the law to get these miracles or not? The Bible says no. It is not by the doing. It is by hearing our faith. The miracles, they come by the love of God. God loves and God gives. It gives out of the abundance of His grace. He wants to give freely. So when something is free, it has to be received freely. The moment we try to turn something that's free, that's given by the love of God, into something that we earn, we're going back to the works of the law in order to seek it by earning, by deserving, by receiving something by reward. That actually goes right in opposition to Galatians 3.5. Let me read it one more time. Therefore God who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does He do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So let's uh, take, for example, Dr. Susan is here, and she is very kindly going to give me something. Guy, here, I want to give you a present. Oh, you're so nice. A wonderful pair of these sunglasses. They're right. the finest ones I was able to find for you, and it's such a joy to give this to you as a gift. Oh, but Dr. Susan, I don't deserve it. How can you give this to me? No, 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 no. Take it back. Oh, let, wait, wait, wait. I'll receive it if you let me wash your car, let me... Fix your tires, let me mow your lawn. Okay, can I do that for you? Guy, I don't want you to have to do anything. But why? I just why? want to give this to you out of God's love and blessings. You don't have to do anything. Just I want you to enjoy these wonderful glasses that will give you a lot of blessings. Thank you. I receive it. So there it is. We just acted out something which we are all familiar with. God is infinite, right? He has everything in his possession. He loves us and he wants to give us is free gifts of miracles of provision by grace. Grace is the unearned and undeserved favor of God. It cannot be earned. It is undeserved. The moment we think that we have to earn it or put ourselves in a position of trying to deserve it, we negate grace. So here's Dr. Susan giving me something by grace. A free gift is free. The moment I try to do something, I made something free, no longer free. It can't work that way. And why? Why is it that it cannot work that way? Because while it is free for us, it's not free for God. It costs God Everything. For God to forgive us, for God to give us all these blessings, He has to first redeem us. Because we are not righteous, we can't stand in His presence righteously. So how can we receive something? So God has to first make us righteous in order to give us these gifts. And that cost Him His Son. So if, if we try to do anything to deserve or work for these free gifts, we're actually saying, you know, the gift of your son, the work of your son, the sacrifice of your son on the cross is insufficient. Well, God's not going to do that, right? He cannot take anything that will reduce the magnificent sacrifice of His Son. And that's why these gifts of grace, these miracles, they are given as free from the love of God to us. So back to Galatians 3.5. So the next uh, verse is Galatians 3.6. And it says, Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So remember, it says, Do the miracles come by working of the law, or does it come by hearing of faith? Then it explains what does hearing of faith mean. It means, the example is, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So that is what hearing of faith is. So if we, if we understand how Abraham got credited with righteousness, then we know what hearing of faith is, and we know how these miracles flow. Naturally, we hear about Abraham. Oh my gosh, Abraham, this amazing patriarch. He did all these things. He sacrificed his son, and, and on and on. 
I'm not like Abraham. But let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's see what the Bible is referring to when it says Abraham believed God. When did this happen? When did Abraham believe God? In Galatians 3, 6 is quoting from an event that took place in the Old Testament. Where is this event? It's in Genesis 15. And let's read it and I'll tell you why it's so important. In Genesis 15, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham, I'm your shield an exceeding great reward. And then Abram asks God and says, you know, I don't have a child, I have a son. Who's going to be my heir? And God says to Abram, just look at the heaven. Uh, can you number the stars? And so shall your descendants be. So he took Abram outside to look at the stars and number them. And do you not see that your descendants will be as many as this? And it says in Genesis 15 verse 6, it says, and Abram believed God and then God accounted it to him for righteousness. So that's where Galatians 3, 6 is quoting from. It is here. So Abram believed God. What did he believe? What is it that he really believed? Did he do something? Did he, I don't know, did he do some amazing uh, faith exploit? No, he believed that God was give, going to give him a son. But wait a minute, what did Abraham do to God to deserve this? Nothing. So Abraham had a revelation of the goodness of God, that God, because he loved Abraham, because he's good, he's a gracious God, that he would give him a son. That revelation, that believing is what God calls faith and God accounted him righteous. Maybe we think, oh, Abraham, you know, uh, yes, he did this, but he was really a very obedient and faithful man, right? He, he obeyed the Ten Commandments, he did everything right, and so this believing is just an afterthought or maybe uh, something that follows this great obedience. Well, the Ten Commandments were give, was given after Abraham, not before him. The Ten Commandments didn't exist. There was no commandment, so to speak, in this sense to obey. Abraham really had a revelation of God's goodness, and he understood that God was so gracious that he would have his heart's desire, which was a son. And this believing in God by undeserved and unmerited favor of God, which is grace, is what God deems faith and God called him righteous. Again, I repeat Galatians 3, 5. Does God who works these mighty miracles do it by obedience or works of the law? Or does he do it by hearing of faith, right? Now we know what hearing of faith is. It is believing that God loves, God supplies, God is gracious, God is good. The problem with the law is that it's perfect. The law is perfect. It's from God. It's perfect. The Ten Commandments are perfect. The problem is it requires perfection from man. It demands righteousness from man, but it cannot give righteousness to man. It says you must do these things and don't do these things, do these things and don't do these things. If you do all these things perfectly, then you're going to be blessed. Which human being can do all these things? They cannot. The law wasn't meant to give righteousness. It was meant to demonstrate to man and woman that they cannot fulfill the perfection of God. And therefore, they have to rely on someone to save them, someone to take their place, someone to redeem them. They have to rely on grace. Because while the law demands righteousness, it is grace that supplies righteousness. It is only by grace that we can receive righteousness. Let me show you a few scriptures here. But before that, let's just segue a little bit into back to the miracles. Because we human beings need miracles of God. How can we survive when we face one peril after another? What do we do? Where do we turn? Is it to ourselves? Is it to this person, that person, or is it to God? So in Matthew 6, 27, it says, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to his life or her, her life? So here it is talking about life. If we are faced with terrible medical diagnosis, right? A prognosis that's really bad. And someone says, you've got only so many hours. How do we add to those hours? Do we do it by worrying? No. The answer is here in Matthew 6, 27. And it also says, well, besides this, why do you worry about your clothes? About what you wear? Don't you see the flowers of the field? They don't labor or spin. I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed like one of these. And if uh, God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow it is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. For the pagans, or the people who do not believe in God, run after all these things. But your heavenly Father, who loves you, knows what you need, and he will give these to you. So in verse 33, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things, extension of hours of life, clothing, supply, will be given to you as well or added to you. So everybody desires the same thing. Some just seek it after, by their own uh, sweat and effort. Some go to God and say, hey, God, I really don't deserve this. I, I really need a free gift. I, I need you to supply because I'm out of energy. I'm out of trying. I just can't do it anymore. The key word here in verse 33 is seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And I draw your attention to the word his. Here's where the error comes in. We think, oh, seek first his righteousness means let's obey the law. Let's do all the things that make God happy. And if we can fulfill all these things, God's happy and he's going to give us these things. Wait a minute. We just transformed grace into works again. Notice it says seek his righteousness. It doesn't say seek your righteousness. 
It doesn't say earn righteousness. It says seek his righteousness. Now, how do we get this righteousness, this God's righteousness? Well, Abraham got it. How? He believed that God was going to give him a son. He believed in God's goodness. And God credited him with righteousness. God gave him righteousness. It's God's righteousness that Abraham received, not his own. In Romans 5.17, it says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. This is referring to Adam. Adam disobeyed God, and he subjected all of humanity into the realm of death and curse and disobedience. Then much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. It says, of the gift of righteousness. Do you see it? It's a gift of righteousness. Just like Dr. Susan gave me a gift just now, it's a gift of righteousness. If it's a gift, it's free. I cannot do anything in any way that will transform a free gift into a reward because then it's no longer a gift. Righteousness can only be received as a gift. Once we understand why, then we can understand why Galatians 3, 6 we started with says, do we receive these miracles by works? Do we receive it by hearing or by gift, by faith? I'm just going to read one more scripture. Romans 3, 20. It says, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law because the law makes us conscious of sin. So here we are, we have God's word that says, you know, if you try to do the law, you cannot be declared righteous. Wait a minute, didn't we just say we want to be righteous so that we can receive all these things added? Yes, but we cannot do it by the works of the law. Romans 3.21, but now apart from the law, apart, the laws here, apart, separate from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. See, God's righteousness is made known apart from the law. The more we cling to this idea of doing the law, we grow apart from the righteousness of God. And finally, uh, Romans 3.22, the righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Back to this original statement in, in Galatians 3.5 and 3.6. We believe. We believe in the love of God. We believe in the grace of God. We believe that God has done the work. And that believing in the goodness of God is what God calls righteousness of God. And we receive this free gift of righteousness. And when we receive it, we reign in life. We have deliverance from these terrible curses and sicknesses and things that attack from left and right. I did say it was the last verse, but I got to share one more. Sorry. Romans 4, 5. But to the one who does not work, doesn't work, but who believes in God, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. It's almost a contradiction. To the one who does not work, but who believes in God, who justifies who? The godly? No, it's who justifies the ungodly. You see, it's kind of backwards. When we realize that we're ungodly, then we allow God to justify us, make us righteous by a free gift. The moment that happens, we then can have all these things added. Miracles after miracles after miracles. Our hands are open because we're not busy trying to serve God and do these things. We're open to the wonderful supply of God's grace. The God, love of God can now touch us. We're not obstructing grace by works. Uh, I'll stop here in Romans 4, 5. See you later.